Good morning comrades, welcome back to the channel and let's jump straight into it because I'm pretty sure you all are excited to see the new engine of the Ring Tractor. So here it goes. Yes, and this is not my normal reaction, but it's also not over exaggerating because in case you've missed the last couple of vlogs, we had lots of delays, drawbacks, setbacks, lots of drama with the Ring Tractor project, lots of, uh, let's not talk about the bad things, but what I'm trying to say is that I almost kind of lost faith in it. And when I saw this engine, I was like, oh my God, yes. This was like a really the spark of excitement that I really needed for the project again. So we're gonna tell you everything about the engine. And as you could have seen, the engine is not here. So where is it? It is currently at Darkside Developments, the amazing UK diesel tuning company that I've been friends with for the last couple of years, ever since I drove their CityGo and the S5 TDI, amazing videos, check them out in the video description, amazing cars, amazing laps. And ever since I bought the car, the first thing I did was like messaging them like, yo, I bought the TDI diesel Golf, so uh, let's do something together. And that kind of kicked off, but the engine is there and because of the current travel restrictions, world restrictions, etc., this is how we had to do it. They assembled the engine, they filmed the video, which you can find on their YouTube channel. Make sure to check that video out because in this video, I will be commenting on that video, including the fragments of that video, but I will not include all of the video from there on their channel on that particular video. It's getting complicated. They will also have uh, the, the fast motion time-lapse of uh, the assembly of the engine, assembly of the gearbox, so lots of cool content. And in addition, we'll get to that later on, but the car will have to go to them and uh, they will be building the car, setting the car up. So subscribe to their channel, make sure to check it out. Uh, but let's now uh, move back to the engine because I'm getting all excited and you don't, you haven't seen me this excited the last couple of days, weeks. So I think this says a lot. Um, let's talk about the parts. Uh, what parts are in there? What led to them? So basically what is going on? As you can see, this is a full engine build that's going on. Paul's just about ready to start throwing it together. This is for Misha from Apex. Oh, the original ring tractor. Anyway, what was the goal? Originally it was gonna be a race engine, but that's been pulled back a little bit now. It's gonna be a, a track day engine. But basically he wants as much power as he can, little smoke, and as much reliability as possible. Now, indeed, things changed from a race engine to a track day engine, and let me give you a quick recap. When I bought the car first, the reason why I bought the TDI in the first place because I was traveling between Zagreb and Nürburgring when I was working at Rimas Automobile and coming here for the weekend and having fun on the Nürburgring, so I could do one, uh, the whole trip, 1,100 kilometers, so one tank of fuel, and have fun on the track. So then we wanted to upgrade the engine slightly, but then still uh, keep the reliability. So they sent some parts over, but we never installed them because by the time we were ready to install them, because we first did the suspension, brake upgrade, seats upgrade, etc. I uh, left Rimas Automobili uh, nine months later. And then I said, you know what? Let's go race with it. Let's go fully crazy. Then we started thinking of uh, racing with it, build a race engine, and uh, then later on I decided to go race with the Cupra, that car, which we're gonna be racing in slightly more than a month's time. Uh, and because like converting the Golf to a race car would just cost too much extra money, too much extra headache. So I said, you know what? We're not gonna race that car, but we're still gonna build it as crazy as possible for the track days, so to say. So make it fast as hell, but reliable as hell as well. So not much has changed probably, but this is where we currently are. And now let's take a closer look at all the parts that went into it. The block that's been honed, it's not of a size ball. We've kept it 1.9 because I don't like going to the tool it is when you're pushing them really hard. I like to keep the cylinder wall thickness, but it's been honed a little bit bigger, skimmed, cleaned, everything. Rachel, I'm going to get a final wipe down before it all goes completely together. Also got the rocker cover, all the little bits and pieces. The oil pump, this is a used one. 
but we take them all to bits and check they're all fine. And if the tolerances are perfect, we don't bother putting a new one in because there's just no real need to. Pistons, they're where we probably spend the most amount of time. And you can clearly tell, I find this one of the most beautiful parts of the engine. And also, yeah, it's very sad that we will not be able to see it when the engine is installed and when the pistons are inside, of course. Let's hope that we will not see them again, that it doesn't go well, you know what I mean. <laughs> so we've machined the pockets a tiny bit deeper on these. We've left the ball standard size, but we took off all the sharp edges. We open up the galleries for the oilways and then we coat them with this gold coating and underneath we're coating that allows the heat to come out a bit better as well. And we weight match them all, we not 0.04 grams if I remember correctly. The scales will go down to 0.02 but generally go to about 0.04, something like that. Which sometimes you take a bit of material out of the pin to do that if there's quite a discrepancy. So that's that. The crank that's just a balanced crank we've not done anything too crazy with that if we're doing it if we really want to spend a bit of time on them we can get them balanced with a flywheel and stuff like that but we've not gone to that extreme with this one because it's not really going to make much difference also new piston rings they're all going to be gapped perfectly which a lot of people forget to do with that so check your ring gaps we're not going to tell you what they need to be because then it starts blowing by in your moan or it rips the top of the piston off in your moan still so we don't tell you what they are that's up to you to decide Squirters, there's a specific part number that we use, it's the largest ones, and we open them up as well. ARP main studs, always got to have them. ARP rod bolts, they're a good idea. Roston H beam connecting rods, definitely a good idea. And then we've got the uh, standard sort of, these are all a, what they call a sputter bearing, which have been upgraded for most petrol engines, but the top the top one on the connecting rod's got a different coating on it which takes more pounding which is what normally fails and just all genuine service bits full new cam belt genuine water pump don't fit chinese ones they're not worth hassle everything else has been cleaned up oil cooler kit we've not chose which gasket we're going to use yet but from the we, we did a dry build before we had the pistons machined we took a tiny bit of top of the pistons and from our measurements we're going to need a one oil egg gasket and we're going to be a little bit below where that's going to be but we might end up with a two oil we'll see i always like to have not go too thick a lot of people just put a three oil straight in but that's how you make a car smoke you want to keep the egg gasket as tight as you can but you also don't want the pistons in the head which happens often so random bits of bolts and stuff like that quite a few of these are new so obviously the main crank bolts and the ones that hold the water pump and stuff like that on a new and oil pump and stuff like that Iron Air lifters, which these are not in the box, but they're the uh, DLC coated ones. ARP head studs. We've got the 74 degree thermostat, a bit of ARP grease. This is the race cam that we do, the plus seven one, and that kit comes with the lifters and the bearings and the bolts that you need. Upgraded dual valve springs, so they'll stop it fluttering away. And then we've got a ported head which this one is one from another project from a while ago <coughs> that we only used a little bit of. So we've put this back into this build. That's got the big valves. We've not gone for the dimples on this one because this one worked pretty well and we know it's going to be good. So we've left it at that. Just a quick side note that I find worth mentioning is that when I spec the engine or better said, when I gave the brief to build this engine, I said, I want the full house. I want the best of the best. And when it comes to the cylinder hat, I said, I also want everything around it. This includes the golf ball effect, the Starlink connection. I wanted to be able to go to Mars and back, all the jokes aside. And as you can hear, they didn't do the golf ball effect or any extras. And the reason I'm mentioning this is not to complain, but actually to praise them because they had all the authority or like the possibilities to go all those extra things and charge me extra for it. They didn't do it because they said you simply don't need it. And I find it a very honest thing to do. Then we've got new injected harness, all the bolts. That's for the rocker cover. Rockers, you always make sure on these PDs that these are in place. We see a lot of these where they've popped out and then you get an oil pressure and then you, you start wearing your injectors out for some reason. And then we've got, off the top of it, I think these are 120s. These are the 120 injectors. I have to double check on that now. I 
the 28 turbo to go on there as well gtd 28 that's a full kit the only thing that's missing is the manifold we're doing this on a v-band as well because these are a little bit easy to swap if you have any problems shallow sum which has got the steel bottom on in case you whack some curves on that one of our custom inlet manifolds and then we've got all the turbo inlet pipe and our silicons and everything there so it's going to be a complete unit all ready to drop in uh, we've got a s3 intercooler an alloy, rad alloy radiator and a brand new aircon condenser because he still wants to keep his air conditioning which i think is a bad idea but he wants to so he gets what he wants i guess we will indeed see whether keeping air conditioning in is a bad idea or not all i want to say is that from the very first day i said we must keep the aircon in now back then the reason for that was because the car was being used as a commuter from zagreb to nurburgring and doing an 1100 kilometer trip on a hot summer day without air conditioning in a shit box no thank you but also when it comes to track driving the main arguments to take out the aircon are of course the weight which is ridiculous and then uh, you might say that it negatively affects the engine cooling or the intercooler cooling it's kind of we'll have to see about that but i want to say that driver cooling is a lot more important especially again on a hot summer day when driving a nurburgring but enough about the cooling let's talk about another vital part that's that's the gearbox i also sent my gearbox back to dark side developments to do some reinforcements to them something that you can see again on their channel but uh just a quick reminder we already had some reinforcements done to it it has a quave differential it has uh, already upgraded clutch and light and single mass flywheel and i think that's pretty much it this was the gearbox that we built for him a while ago it's got the diesel geek shifter on there which are crazy expensive but the one thing i realized i'm not sure why we did it time i think there was a discussion and we decided not to but we never fitted the fourth gear support so this literally sandwiches between the casing and then this threads against that and pushes this little bronze insert against sort of between third and fourth gear and that keeps the casing together all right let's take a look at the finished product and you can see the manifold 28 turbo i said this is on a v-band and then we've got a nice downpipe to go on there as well so it should be pretty easy to get in Ta -da! I'm sorry, but every time I see that engine, it sparks joy inside me, it sparks the excitement of what I needed, something that I already told you in the beginning of the video. But now let's move on to what is next. So the upcoming plans, uh, we will build up the Ring Tractor 2.0 with the previous, with the old parts, so the brakes, suspension, seats, all kinds of stuff in two weeks time. And after that, we are currently working out the logistics to ship the car over to Darkside Developments to put the engine and the gearbox in there. Now, what I wanna say is subscribe to their channel because they will be having the car for, I don't know, maybe even a month if they need to because they will put the engine inside, they will dyno it, they will do some track testing. I absolutely trust them with the, all of their knowledge and expertise. I want it to be perfectly dialed in. And after that, once they say that they're finished with the car and you can have the car back, we will ship it back here to Germany. Or alternatively, if by then the travel restrictions are not going to be such a pain in the ass as it is today, then of course I would happily fly over to UK film with the car, do meet and greets, do track days, do all kinds of cool stuff that I really was looking forward to be doing in the first place, but we will have to see. The time frame that we're talking now, probably the car's completion will be somewhere around May. I honestly don't know. From my side, dark side developments can take as long as it's necessary to tune the engine or like to say to set up the engine to map the engine to set up the car because i find it very important to have it done properly but anyhow stay tuned we will have an upcoming weeks lots of cool content also on their channel once they get the car and in between my new car should arrive here I know I keep teasing you, but just bear with me. Uh, I'm very excited for it. It almost didn't make it here because it got caught in a huge ass snowstorm. Uh, tips, 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 hints, hints, hints. In any case, uh, um, thanks for watching. Let me know what you think in the comments, of course, if you're just as excited as I am. Not sure if I mentioned the horsepower output we're aiming for around 300. We don't have a pin, pin number, but uh, I think it, it, the engine is capable of running more than 300, but on the front wheels, it 
makes no sense. So um, no, not gonna convert it to for motion. Everything enough money spent and for motion is too heavy because it's more understeer. Uh, I'm starting talking nonsense, so this means thanks for watching. Goodbye. Looking forward to seeing you tomorrow when we're gonna have some cool car content. Yes, for sure. Thanks for watching. Bye bye.